Welcome uh, to the health services management um, portion of this discussion. Um, I am Su Susan Bittar and I am the program manager for health services management. We have a, an associate of science degree and a medical office management certificate. The, um, medical, the medical office management certificate is a part of the associate degree. So um, if you sign up to be part of the medical office management path, way you can continue on to obtain your associate degree. My path in healthcare is a little bit different because I started out in nursing. Um, I graduated from a nursing program and passed my NCLEX exam, then went on to, with an associate of science degree and went on to get a bachelor of science degree and a master's of science in nursing. Um, I started out working on a stroke rehab unit. Um, eventually, a few months after my uh, initial career, I was asked to uh, join the ICU staff and I stayed there for several years. While I was an ICU nurse, I worked in hospital administration. So I wore different hats in the hospital uh, when I was part of the hospital staff. Then my career uh, took a non-clinical direction as I was asked to help administer a cardiology office. And uh, since I did not really know anything about private practice, I decided that I was going to edu get educated in the uh, office administration track. So I took a lot of courses in billing and coding um, and healthcare administration because I had to understand how that um, medical practice would operate. Um, I was around when we um, were all paper and uh, we use paper records. I'm going to date myself now. Uh, and, um, and then uh, I was uh, part of the electronic health record implementation plan. So um, I can reflect back on how we utilized paper records back in the day when, when we didn't have the electronics. And so if the, if the um, electronic health record system goes down or the internet goes down, we have to remember how it really operates from the medical record standpoint so that the workflow in the office isn't impeded. Um, I also became a teacher uh, in the nursing profession in the 1990s. And um, subsequently, when I moved to Florida, I um, joined the staff at Seminole State and I became a nursing professor there. I also became an adjunct professor in the health information management and health information technology program and worked closely with Professor Copeman. I also uh, recently, um, in the past few years, took on a program manager role for the health uh, services management program. So, in order to work in healthcare, you, there are many qualities that are really important to be successful. And as a health services manager, it's important that you are caring, that you are compassionate, um, that you have great written, written and verbal communication skills, because not only do you have to interact with patients and other team members of the healthcare team, you have to you know, be able to write and correspond in writing to maybe insurance companies or patients if they're overdue with their bill and so forth. So you have to, you have, to have really good verbal and written communication skills. It's important that you have integrity. Uh, the healthcare professionals depend on you as a health services manager and uh, you want, to be known as a trustworthy person that has really great ethical behavior. Um, you know, it's, it's important that you establish that type of reputation so that people will know that they can come to you and uh, you will associate yourself with other members of the healthcare team, maybe in 
other medical offices or other departments of a hospital that uh, you can depend on for their opinions and advice as you face challenges. It's great to have good organizational skills and sometimes these are learned. Sometimes we're not you know, just born with these, but we need to make sure that we pay attention to the details because remember, we are part of the team that is enhancing the patient care and that encounter. We want to provide uh, quality care. Also understanding the workflow of the healthcare setting just to make sure that that patient encounter is really a smooth uh, transaction, if you will. Because if you don't understand, maybe you're not familiar with a referral or a pre-authorization that's needed by an insurance company, which is something that you'll, you'll learn about in our programs, um, that could delay the patient care. So we want to make sure that we are um, you know, following the processes that need to be uh, completed to make sure that that patient um, care is really smooth and not delayed. We don't wanna delay patient care if we don't have to. So clinical jobs versus administrative jobs. <clears throat> so you'll see in the photo below, that's uh, me with the blue mask in with a group of students when we were practicing some skills in the nursing lab. And I've utilized my clinical stop job or my, or my sk clinical skills with the administrative skills that we need because we have to know how they all work together. With nursing, uh, when we were paper and we didn't have the electronics that we have now, oftentimes the nurses would have what was called a cardex and the cardex would uh, list the plan of care for the patient and also might have an area where we could put the charges for uh, the patient's day. So as we collected the supplies, like an IV or um, maybe some medication, we would take a little tag off of it. And you were supposed to put it on a little uh, cardboard, um, a little cardboard, uh, you know, paper that had the patient's names and, and ID number stamped onto it. And that would go to the coding department. And that's how they would code. But guess what? No one really told us nurses that that's what happened. So a lot of times we would be in a hurry. We would take those little stickers that were for the charges. They would go on our scrubs and we would take them home. And the hospital lost so much money because of that. Communication is really important. So nursing has to know and work together with these other departments. And like for HIM, um, they are working with the medical records to make sure that the medical records are compliant. So if we didn't sign our record or the physicians didn't sign the record, the HMI, HIM department is going to notify whoever and make sure that those records meet those compliance standards. With HIT, what's changed recently, the technology part is order entry by the physicians. In the old days, the nurses used to hand write all the orders or transcribe, transcribe the orders. Now we can enter them into the computer or the physicians can even order uh, into the computer themselves. So coding and billing, medical records and nursing are all integrated and have different roles, but we have to work together. We're a team. Pharmacy is the same way. We need to be able to communicate with the pharmacy, read what the orders are. If the pharmacy is having any questions, they're gonna contact whichever department uh, they need to clarify that information. So with health services management, please remember that uh, we oversee a lot of these things. We look at compliance issues, and we also uh, will create policies and procedures. So let's explore some of the career paths that you can work toward with an associate degree in health services management. So some of these example careers will include medical practice manager, compliance specialist, front office professional, referral coordinator, authorization specialist, a patient account, uh, representative, a trial 
study coordinator, and we're hearing a lot about that today with COVID, a transplant coordinator, and a clinic registrar. You might also um, look into becoming credentialing specialist, a patient service representative. You could um, be a surgical scheduler for surgeries, provider enrollment specialist, a community access liaison, like for example, with hospice. You could also work in dental offices, cancer registries or trauma registries. You could work with electronic health record uh, support systems, and you could also verify the insurance. With the medical office management certificate, you might choose to work as a front office personnel or an authorization specialist. You could also work as a medical scheduler for surgery or diagnostic testing. Um, there are several positions open for administrative assistants, administration or admissions representatives, like in a hospital, patient coordinators, and with experience, you can move up to medical, dental, or even chiropractic office managers. So there are different facilities where you are um, going to find work, outpatient facilities and inpatient facilities. And some examples of the outpatient in facilities will include medical offices, dental offices, chiropractic offices, outpatient surgery centers, outpatient cancer clinics, freestanding emergency rooms, urgent care clinics, and home health care. Inpatient facilities will include nursing homes, assisted living facilities, hospitals, inpatient rehab centers, inpatient mental health centers, and inpatient hospice care. So, so some of the current health issues that you're hearing about today include COVID-19. And I want you to think about some of the things that have currently taken place in our lives, basically in every aspect of our life. As a health services manager, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to be looking and evaluating and assessing the work environment because we wanna keep not only our patients stay safe, but our, our providers and our staff safe. So we are going to have to develop some policies and procedures related to um, COVID-19. And why would we want to have policies and procedures? Because we want everyone to be on the same page and making sure that we're following a certain guideline every single time uh, so that everyone remains in a safe place. So we have to put our heads together and we have to think because this was a really quick transition for COVID-19 and more hands on deck is better. So what happened? There were some quick changes in the medical setting. For example, social distancing, wearing masks and disinfecting. These became really huge issues and still are today. We had to think about our waiting room and our exam room. Someone has to put those actions and plans into action. So you'll see in the waiting rooms, there's going to be policies written about who enters the waiting room, how many people can be in the waiting room, how are we going to handle the patients? Are they going to check in via text message? Are they going to walk in and check in at the desk? How, many, uh, how are we going to schedule these patients so that we can limit some, some of the patient exposure uh, and make sure that they're social distance? We're gonna look at our exam rooms, same thing. We have to figure out, do we need to move furniture? Are we gonna remove like chairs in the exam room so that we don't have extra family members in those exam rooms? And then we have to think about masks. You know, are you going to require all patients wear masks when they enter into the healthcare facilities? Are your, your physicians and your um, staff going to wear the masks? Are the patients, whether they have a medical condition or not, going to be required? What about if you have uh, some patients that are in the waiting room and they are immunocompromised? Or what if you have some staff members that are immunocompromised? We have to think about keeping everyone safe. And then there are temperature checks that 
uh, we might have to um, perform. So you might have to add another staff member just to do some of these extra tasks. Some physician offices or hospitals and even our college, you'll notice, have put in sanitizer stations. So we wanna remind people about hand washing and sanitizing. And um, also keep in mind the elective outpatient procedures were uh, all changed, the scheduling was changed. So someone has to be thinking about these and putting these um, plans in motion. And these are most likely some of the health services managers on the committees that are dealing with these new um, changes. Some challenges that we are facing is like telemedicine. There's several different types of telemedicine. There's um, phone telemedicine now, and there's um, video conferencing. So and sometimes the telemedicine takes place in the medical record. Sometimes it's on FaceTime. There's just so many different ways. So we have to think about that. How are we going to create these policies and procedures or maybe new flow sheets for the providers to use to have questions for these patients. We have to think about texting and social media because texting is not really um, protected information. So we need to think about it. How is this being in compliance? We also have to think about how are payments going to be? Are we gonna have patients coming in and touching the buttons when they're entering the pins? Or are we going to have them, you know, swipe their credit card so that it'll go straight through? Um, you have to think about all these things. For example, also like um, several times you would notice at the front office, they would have the sign in uh, sheet at the front desk with a pen attached to it. Do you really want your patients touching that pen? So someone is putting all of those new policies and procedures in motion. And that is most likely a health services manager. Um, also, some of the things that are, you know, new to healthcare is rationing of the PPE and the ordering of the PPE and, and distributing of the PPE. So uh, we have to think about every single detail. Social media has become a huge um, part of healthcare now. So many of the healthcare facilities of all sizes are involved in, you know, putting things on social media, getting reviews on social media, and making uh, adjustments to their social media. Um, in our program, one thing that we have had a change in is some of our internships have become virtual. We we have had several. Um, great partners that have offered our students some virtual internships. Uh, one most recently is a facility who asked our students to survey their clients about quality measures. We have also had uh, an opportunity with our legacy to um, ask our students to uh, educate people about organ donation. So uh, new opportunities are coming up every day and uh, it, it is, it is a, a fact of life that we have to be flexible and we have to go with the flow and figure out the best way that we can keep our workflow and um, our, our staff working in a very quality environment. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about optional certifications after graduation that are available just so that you'll have some you know, knowledge about some of these certifications. Um, in the health service management arena, uh, there are many different types of postgraduate certifications that you can look into. One is through a company called the American Academy of Professional Coders, the AAPC. They offer a certified physician practice management certificate. They also offer a certified professional compliance officer certificate. And you can see that with these certifications, they focus on many different things, but this, these certifications are when you figure out what area you might have that special interest in, because healthcare is so broad and there are so many different avenues that we can go into. 
And everyone has a, a niche. Everyone has a certain area that they really, you know, may find out that they enjoy. So you could be a, a practice manager or a compliance officer. A practice Management Institute MD is a company that focuses mainly on um, the outpatient settings. And for this particular certificate, it's called a CMOM or a Certified Medical Office Manager. And they teach the practice of, of, about practical administrative skills that lead to improved communication with providers, uh, third party payers, patients, business associates, and it will help to improve your decision making and tactical skills. They focus on many other things. They give a wonderful overall of um, what it takes to run a medical practice. Also, they offer a medical office skill certificate. So if you are interested in that front office experience, whether it be in a private medical office or for a very large company that uh, needs somebody at that front desk, you're the front face. You really are like the public relations person for that company. So customer service guidelines and proper implementation of those guidelines or how to schedule appointments and make sure everything is running efficiently and smoothly are some of the things that that certificate would focus on. There's another company called NHA or National Healthcare Association and they have certifications in like certified electronic health records specialists. And they will teach you how to perform audits or um, process release of information requests for medical records. They also offer another certification called certification, Certified Medical Administrative Assistant Certification. And here you will learn some of the techniques that are used to review and answer practice correspondence. You'll uh, learn to operate computer systems to accomplish office tasks and uh, very specific, uh, specific types of um, computer system tasks. This is my contact information. Um, I am always willing to answer any questions. So please contact me at bitars, B-I-T-A-R-S at seminalstate.edu. And my office phone number is 407-404-6198. And the educational advisor is Tiffany Mobic, and uh, her email is m mobic m o b e c k t at seminalstate.edu. Please let us know if you have any questions uh, that we can answer, and if we don't know the answer, we're going to find that uh, find it out for you. So that concludes this presentation, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to ask answer them.